Over the last 10 or 15 years, the really profound health effects associated with heat waves have become increasingly apparent. Uh, in 2003, there was a terribly severe heat wave that affected uh, the vast majority of Western Europe, and that was estimated to cause about 70,000 deaths. But here in Australia, I think because it's such a hot country, we've often thought of ourselves as somewhat immune to these effects. And um, over the last four or five years, uh, I think we've become aware that, again, that is not the case. So in 2009, for example, there was a, a very severe heat wave in Melbourne and Adelaide, which is estimated to have caused more than 300 deaths. And every year here in New South Wales, we have quite prolonged periods of heat. And, and a good example of that was a, an eight-day period of hot weather that affected Sydney and large parts of New South Wales in 2011. This graph illustrates some of the health effects that we saw during that heat wave in 2011. And what it shows is the number of people admitted to New South Wales emergency departments with heat-related illness. And you can see during that eight-day period, there was a really dramatic increase in that number. Uh, what we also saw was uh, quite a significant increase in the number of people who died from heat-related illness, and we estimate that during that time there were an additional 100 deaths. We know that everyone is to some extent at risk of heat-related illness, but we also know that per certain groups are particularly at risk. Uh, people over the age of 75, especially people with chronic underlying health conditions such as heart or respiratory disease people taking certain medications, and people who live alone are particularly vulnerable. What we also know is that uh, people who cannot avoid being out in the heat are at more risk, so outdoor workers are a special group that need to take care during uh, hot conditions. The good news about uh, heat waves and hot weather is that there are some very simple common sense things everyone can do to minimise their risk. The first is simply to drink more water and this is particularly important for elderly people. Uh, the, the second thing is to do whatever you can to avoid being out in the heat. So firstly plan your day so that you're not out in the afternoon. If you have to go to the shops, try and do it first thing in the morning. If you have an air conditioner, it's a really good idea to use it on these, these really hot days. Um, if you don't have air conditioning, there are other things you can do to keep your house cool, like shading windows, ideally from the outside, but if that's not possible, just closing, closing curtains uh, particularly on the, um, the west-facing parts of the house. The third thing is that um, even if you yourself may not be particularly vulnerable to hot weather, you probably know someone who is. And so if you can, we would strongly encourage you to get in touch with your elderly friends and relatives, either by telephone or dropping around, to, to let them know that you're thinking of them, to offer them some practical support on these days, which can be really stressful and, and hard for those people. And, and finally, I think, Hot weather is always an issue here in Australia, so it's important just that you are aware of, first of all, the risks and the simple things that you can do to avoid it. So have a plan, keep an eye on the weather forecast throughout the summer, and when you know it's going to be hot, uh, take these simple actions and, and, as I said, know who it is that you're going to call and take particular care of on those days.